Now let's go over Lee code question number 1725, number of rectangles that can form the largest square. Now the question says you're given an array, rectangles at index i represents the ith rectangle at length and width. So this is length and this is width. You can cut the ith rectangle to form a square with a size length of k if both k is less than or equal to length or k is less than or equal to the width. So for example, if you have a rectangle 4, 6, you can cut it to get a square with a side length of at most 4. And if you don't know what square is, square should have all same size. When you have a rectangle that looks something like this, let's say that this is 4 and this is 6. In order for us to get a square, we have to cut this by length of 2 and this will have a length of 4, this will have 4, and 4, and so forth. So square should have all same size. So from this rectangle, the largest square that we can make is this 4 by 4 square. Let max length be the side length of the largest square you can obtain from the given rectangle. So that would be 4 in our case. Return the number of rectangles that can make the square with side length of max length. Okay, now let's look at our example. So for example, we have this as our input array. And remember that each one represents a rectangle. So we have four rectangles here. Now you have to figure out what the maximum square we can make out of this each and individual rectangle. So for the first one, it's going to be 5 because we can't make a square that's greater than 5, right? Because our length is 5. And for this one, it's going to be 3. This is going to be 5 and this is going to be 5. Now, what they want us to do is you want to first get the maximum square and then it wants us to return the count of maximum squares. So what's the maximum square here? Well, it's going to be 5, right? Because we have 5, 3, 5 and 5 and 5 is the biggest size and how, yeah, how many 5's do we have? We have 1, 2 and 3. So our result is going to be 3 because we have 3 size 5 rectangles. Now let's look at our example 2. So what's the maximum square that we can get for each rectangle? It's going to be 2 here. It's going to be 3 here. It's going to be 3 here. It's going to be 3 here. And what's the maximum square out of this whole rectangles? It's going to be 3, right? Because 2 is smaller than 3. And how many 3's do we have? We have 1, 2, and 3. So our result, again, is going to be same as before, 3. Now, using this logic, we can try to solve this problem in two ways. First thing I can think of is we can try to store the max square into an object and then get the count for each. And lastly, return the count of biggest square and the second will be more optimal because for this solution you won't have to make an object to store the count of the squares well instead of counting the number of max squares that we get what we can do is we can just track which one is the largest and if it is the largest and then second keep a count of the largest square so using these two logics, try to implement your solution. First one would be to create an object to store the count of each square that we get. And next, what we can do is, well, you don't really have to make an object. So just track which square is the largest and then keep the count of the largest square only. So this will be giving us a space complexity of O of n because you might have to create an object that's equal to the size of the input. But for this one, we just have to keep this one variable where it's going to keep the count of the largest. If you guys find this helpful, make sure you guys like and subscribe. Thanks. Now let's go over our first solution and our first solution is going to have a time and space complexity of O of n. Later we are going to actually optimize our space complexity but let's first code this solution because I think it's easier to understand. And time complexity will be O of n because we will have to iterate through all the elements in our given array. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable named output and this is going to be an object. And here what we're going to do is we're going to store our keys which is going to represent the squares and values which is going to represent the count of the squares. And later we are going to get the maximum key and then return the count of that 
largest square that we have. So I create my output to store up my result and I'm going to create a for loop and let's just create a for of loop and for each rectangle in rectangles array. What I'm first going to do is I'm going to find the square. So let's just call this min or you can just call it square. Let's call it square. And I'm going to set this equal to math.min square operator rectangle. And what this does is if you were to just console log square, you can see that it's giving us the square for each rectangle that we have. So largest square that we can make out of the first one is five. Second one is three, five, and five. And that's exactly what we have. So we now have our squares. But what we need to handle is you want to put these squares into our output object and count how many of the squares we have. So first, let's check. So if the output does not have the square, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a value of zero. If it's the other case, so we initialize it with a value of zero and then we increment the output by one. It's not output, it's output at square. And now let's just console log our output and we have a count of our object or squares. Let's just console log here. So you can see that we have one square because we have a value of one that has a size of three and three squares that has a size of five. And if you were to just console all squares again here, you can see that we have three fives and one three. So it's looking good so far. Now, what we need to do is we need to be able to get the maximum square in our output. So I'll call it max and we are going to use math.max to get the maximum value. And we're going to use the square operator and object.keys to get all the keys in the object and pass in our output object. And let's just console log our max square. And it should give us a five, right? Because we have only threes and fives. We got our maximum square, but now we need to return the count of the largest square, which in our case is going to be three. So how do we do that? Well, how do we access a key or a value in an object? Well, we do that by first we're going to return because that's going to be our result output at key max. And that should give us three, which we got because again, we have five threes, which is the largest square. And let's just uncomment our second input. We have three here, three here, three here, and a two here. So maximum or the largest square is three. And how many threes do we have? We have three of those. So that's why we get three. So this is our first solution. Again, I think this is really easy to understand, but let's try to later optimize our code so that we can save some space. Now let's go over our second solution where we optimize our space complexity. If you remember from before, we had a space complexity of O of N. And the reason was because we had an object to store our key value pairs where key represented the square and value re represented the count of that square. But here, what we're going to do is we're just going to keep two variables where one tracks the largest square and another one tracks the count of that largest square. So having two variables, we are able to save some space. So given that, now let's start coding. So first, I'm going to create two variables. One is called max, and this is going to be the largest square that I'm going to have and another one is going to count and this is going to keep track of how many largest square that I'm going to have. Let's use a for of loop and it's going to look similar. Let's switch things up a little. We're going to have length and we are going to have width for the second one. So what we're here doing is we're just destructuring our array and if you don't know how that works I'll show it to you really soon. So rectangles Okay, now if I were to just console log length and console log width, you can see that length represents the first value, so 5, 3, 5, 16, and so on and so forth, and width represents 8, 9, 12, and 5. So this is a way to name the first element in the array. This is the name of the second element in the array. Or you could just done rectangles for this solution if you like. It, it doesn't really matter. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my square. And this is going to look similar to our previous one. It should be min because it can't be the bigger than the smallest size that we have. 
So we are going to pass in length and width. And if you want, you could just do the same thing as before where you pass rectangle here and then just use spread operator and pass in our rectangle. And if you were to just console log our square, you can see that we have our squares, right? So, so for the first one, it's going to be five, three, five, and five. Now, what we need to do is we need to check. Well, if my current square, if my current square is greater than my maximum square, that means that I need to change my maximum square to the current one, right? So we are going to set max equal to square. So we are replacing our maximum square here. And then there's one more thing. What we have to do is we need to increment the count. So we're going to set count equal to one. Okay, that looks good. And another thing is if our square is equal to the current maximum square, what do you have to do? We have to increase the count by one. So let's say that we were passing a value of five. Well. First, is square equal to max? Well, our max is negative infinity for now. So that evaluates to false. So we skip. Is square greater than 5? Well, 5 is greater than maximum, which is negative infinity. So what we do is we reset maximum to our current square, which is 5. Set count to 1. And then next, what's our square? Our square is 3. Well, is square greater than 3? No, right? So we just keep looping. And then our square is 5 again. Well, is our square equal to max? Well, it is because at first our square became 5. So we increment our count to 2. So this evaluates to 2 now. And then next, we go to the next one and have another 5. And square is equal to our max. So we increase our count by 1 again. So after we're done, we just want to return our result, right? Which is going to be stored in our count variable. So there you have it. Uh, we have our result of 3. And let's check for the second one. And the second one also gave us a result of 3. Now, using the same logic that we used before, I want to go over this solution one more time, but we are going to use reduce for this one. Well, the code itself is actually going to look really similar, but I think it's good to practice solving question in a little bit different way. And here we can just practice using reduce too. So same as before, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set my max to negative infinity and then here i'm going to use reduce so rectangles dot reduce and here i'm going to pass in two things my accumulator and my current value and i'm going to give an initial value of zero and our that means that our accumulator is going to be zero right and later i'm going to return my accumulator and this is actually going to store the count of the largest square that we are going to have. Same as before, what I want to do is I want to get the square. So square is equal to math.min. And let's just actually rename this to rectangle. And we are going to pass in our rectangle. And let's just console log square. You can see that we have our largest square for each rectangle. Now let's just get rid of that. And same as before, we need to have some if statements to check. So if square is the same size as our max, what do you want to do? We want to increase our count, right? But here we don't have a count. Instead, we are going to have an accumulator that's going to keep the count. And we can just actually rename this to count if you want. But I want to just leave it like this for now. And we're going to increment our count or accumulator by one. And next we need to check. Well, is the current square greater than our maximum square that we stored? Well, if it is, we want to reset our maximum square the first to the current square and then set accumulator to 1. And we're actually done. So everything inside the reduce function looks the same. It's just that we have an accumulator. And instead of using a for loop, we just use reduce. But the logic is the same. And as you can see, we have our result. And let's just uncomment this. You can see that we have three for this one also. If you guys find this helpful, make sure you guys like and subscribe. Thanks.